Welcome to another episode of Messages from Heaven. I'm Paula Black and today with me is Kara and we're going to be sharing with you three steps to hearing God's voice. It's a desperate need in the body of Christ. So many people struggle with knowing what God wants them to do and with sensing his leading. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest benefits of our salvation is the ability to have God speak to us. Yes. To hear his voice. Now, and when I say voice, I'm talking about it could be an audible voice, what sounds like an audible voice, but that's fairly rare. Mm -hmm. uh, the basics are he speaks to us most commonly through his word, by the Holy Spirit who's been given to each of us who are born again. So uh, through the Bible, he will speak to our heart. Uh, through someone else, maybe a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a, a word of prophecy that would come forward about you that would give you some guidance and direction. So sometimes he uses others in the body. Um, but sometimes it's just a prompting, a sense by the Holy Spirit, an impression in our heart that allows us to discern what God's will is for us. Uh, he wants an intimate relationship. He created each of us with the ability to have a spirit. We are a spirit so that we can communicate with him one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, Christians, for the most part, they have no trouble talking to God, telling him what they need, telling him what they want, yeah. praying. And yet they have a lot more trouble hearing his response. That's so right. that's why we're covering this today, to give you some basic understanding of how to begin to learn how to hear God's voice. That's right, Mom. And not everything that we are asking of God is found in the Bible. So if we're That's looking true. for, you know, advice, uh, Lord, should I take this job or stay at the job I'm at currently? Should I move? These things aren't going to be found in Leviticus or anything like that. So we have to be able to recognize how to hear the voice of God when we are asking a request such as that. So uh, we're going to start off today with a scripture in Proverbs 16, 9, which is one of our family's favorites. We are very goal oriented over here. So this one, this means a lot. Now I will be reading it out of the amplified version, which we find just adds a little bit more depth to each of the scriptures. This one again, Proverbs 16, uh, verse nine, a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. You know, that's a powerful scripture that really does depict our interaction with God that's right. and how he leads our life. Uh, you have a story that I'd like you to share about when you moved to Idaho. Mm -hmm. And that's a great illustration of exactly how that scripture worked. That's right. Well, I had made my plans. I had uh, decided you and dad were both living up in Idaho. I was in Long Beach, California at the time. And so I had purchased a house out in Idaho and I was ready to make the move. So I had turned my keys into my landlord, packed all of my belongings into the back of my pickup truck, and I was ready to hit the road. However, a couple days before my trip, it came on the news that there was going to be the most severe storm of the entire year, and it just happened to be covering the exact same route that I was supposed to be taking on this two-day journey. And so everybody you know, that knew I was going to be moving, they said, oh, you shouldn't hit the road. Where, what are you going to do? And yet I had plans that I was supposed to do certain things. Um, so I went to the beach, and I went and just talked with God, and I asked him what I should do. Because in the natural, it seemed like that was the dumbest thing for me to hit the road with all of my belongings kind of naked in the back and exposed. Um, but I knew that God would lead me one way or another. So I prayed about it and I felt that the Lord had said, go ahead and go. Now, again, this wasn't an audible voice. This was just a voice. And as I've gotten more mature spiritually, I've learned to recognize it. But a lot was, you know, weighing on this decision. So I didn't want to mess that up. So I asked God again, I said, is that you, Lord? Is this you telling me that I should go ahead and go? And all of a sudden, all of the anxiety, the uncertainty, uh, you know, the concern that I had about the dangers of the road, it just kind of melted away. That's the best way I can explain it. And that comes through, uh, that's a confirmation that the Lord gives you to say, yes, that was me. So I said, okay, I went ahead and decided to go. I, you know, of course I'm not going to be dumb. I went and got a big tarp and a spider web netting and I covered everything. So I hit the road 
And uh, again, this was a two-day journey. The, I had no rain, no anything. The first night I get to a hotel and as soon as I check in in the room, it starts raining. But fortunately, everything is covered. So everything is safe while the hotel, uh, you know, while I was in the hotel. I wake up in the morning to hit the road again. Clear skies, beautiful clear skies. Uh, get to Idaho where you and dad are anxiously awaiting me and we quickly unload because we're hearing all the you know I'm getting notifications that the storm is coming and it's all this stuff so we unload the car and within about three to five minutes of the last load of everything from the trailer and the pickup truck it started pouring rain and then hail and snow and it lasted for days and I just thought that was so interesting that I was able to make it and the storm just followed right behind me, but it never touched me. And God was very uh, constant with him letting me know it was okay. He would take care of me and things that there's no way in the natural I would have known. And that's so common that, you know, the spiritual, and the natural are different. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear reports, we get information in the natural and then God has a different plan, a different way for us to go. So we have to be tuned in to his leading because so oftentimes it's contrary to the information we're getting in our logical mind from the natural realm. Right. So if we really want to walk with God and, and find his purposes played out in our life, we have to be tuned in to hear his voice. So we're going to talk now about the three steps, how, what you should take uh, in order to hear God's voice. These are the basics of learning to hear God's voice. That's right. Step one is spending time with the Lord. Obviously, that means reading your Bible. More than just pulling a Bible promise out of the box for a day, but reading your Bible so that you get to know his ways in context uh, of what he did in the Old Testament, what he does in the New Testament. So that is critically important. And then interacting with him about mm -hmm. the word, praying, listening, communicating, letting it go both ways. And, you know, I think it's really smart. A lot of people, and I do this as well, I, I read one chapter in the Old Testament, one chapter of Proverbs, one chapter in the New Testament every day, and just to consistently get through the Bible. However, if you're really struggling with something, whether it be your finances or your marriage or something specific, it's probably better for you to spend your time when you are in the Word of God to go to the concordance and find those scriptures in the Bible that deal with your very situation mm -hmm. because God gave us the study tool. The second uh, step that you want to take is to listen to God. That's sometimes the hardest thing to do. I know it is for me in this day of social media where there's just information and stuff coming at you from all ways. So much noise. Oh, it's everywhere. But Psalms 46 10 says, be still and know that I am God. So as you were saying, mom, earlier to, to spend time in prayer, say 10 minutes a day or so when you're starting out five minutes, if you're starting out, that's important. Praying for certain things, thanking God for certain things, but you also need to spend equal amount of time just being quiet and listening to God answer because that's how we hear the Holy Spirit prompting our heart to do certain things. That's and right. that gets overlooked so often. And we're not saying as the new age does to empty your mind. Right. You do not need to empty your mind. God doesn't want that. He wants us to meditate on his word. So what does that mean to meditate on his word? Mom? To keep his word in your mind, to think it through, to apply it to your own life as you think about it, to maybe try to memorize it, but to to like a, it's like a cow chewing his cud. I'm from Idaho, so we saw a lot of that. <laughs> but they're like chewing and chewing and chewing, and they don't swallow. They just keep chewing and getting every nutrient out of that grass. Mm -hmm. uh, so they just keep enjoying the flavor, enjoying the process of having the uh, slow process of that nutrient of the grass taken into their body. So spiritually speaking. We're chewing our cud. We're meditating on God's word. We're meditating on the things of God, the things he's teaching us, the things we've learned, the, th the sermon we heard or the devotional we just had. So when we're silent, after we've prayed, you're saying to 
remind ourselves of the scriptures I'm or saying to listen to God in the context of his word and his ways, not to just try to make your mind empty. Mm -hmm. That's what new agers do in order right. to get voices from the other side. Not that good is, voices. No, Satan's <laughs> generous. He's always willing to share his apostles, his disciples with you. Uh, and they have voices. They'll speak into your mind, but God is always speaking to your spirit. He always, he's a spirit. He speaks to our spirit. And then from our spirit, it goes to our mind. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed, especially when I'm praying in the spirit. And because I don't know what I'm praying. Yeah. But then immediately I'll gain thoughts in my mind that I understand. And I'll realize that's what I just prayed. Mm -hmm. And so our spirit is the connection with God. And then our mind is the processor. Mm -hmm. So w once we start processing, we meditate on those things God's sharing with us. What I do is after I pray, I just, I'm silent, but I silently pray, Lord, I'm really asking for your guidance here. I'm going to be still. I'm going to ask for you to answer my prayers. Help me recognize your voice. And this is the wonderful thing. It's just like faith or wisdom. Mm -hmm. You can pray for asking for God to help you recognize his voice. Uh, I ask him to give me confirmation in the beginning, especially when you're starting out. Um, you may think that you hear God's voice, but maybe it's not. And especially if it's a big decision, then you want to be sure. So find two people. This is what I did in the beginning until I absolutely recognized that, that voice of God. I would ask God to confirm it through two people who I knew were spirit filled and walked with God. Unfortunately, I have two, you know, <laughs> built in. So that was pretty easy for me to find. But, you know, you can do that too. And if you don't have two people, ask God to bring those mm -hmm. two people for you. Mm -hmm. So he will establish a way if you ask for it to help you be able to recognize his voice. Okay. Step three, learn to recognize God's voice. And when we're talking about God's voice, which we all do, and everybody says that all the time, God said this to me, God said that to me, it's likely not an audible voice. He does do that on occasion, but most often he speaks through his word, he speaks through his Holy Spirit, an impression in our heart, he gives us his thoughts, and his, uh, he brings to our remembrance things we've learned in the Word, things we've heard in a sermon that was godly, those things that are teaching us about Him. He's directing our thoughts, directing our heart to perceive what He wants us to understand. Mm -hmm. So we, le we need to learn to recognize, is this you, God? Question it. It's, we're supposed to test the spirits because Satan's spirits, the demons, are all around us putting thoughts in our mind. You know, thought coming into your mind doesn't mean that's your thought. Especially when you say, oh, where did that come from? That's a horrible thing to think. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to bring every thought captive uh, to the obedience of Christ. So anything that comes into your mind that is not in agreement with God and His Word, we cast that down and we come back to focusing on God and His ways. And there's nothing in, in my life, spiritually, there's nothing as transformative mm -hmm. as being able to finally say, I, I know that that was God talking to me. And I want to say this really quick because hearing the voice of God is not like our faith. Uh, when you're, you're building your faith in your Christian walk, it can sometimes get harder. I mean, when I've led it, people, it, it almost always, does. yeah, it always does pretty much. Okay. When I've led people to the Lord and they've spent, you know, 20, 30 years unsaved and then they get saved and they pray for the littlest things and bam, it's super easy. And I, I get jealous sometimes I, I forget, you know, how easy it can be for the new believer, but that is it's faith is a muscle that gets built over time. So the longer that you walk with God, the more that you grow in your maturity, the lo sometimes God waits to the last day or the last hour, the last minute, you know, just to keep you on your toes and make sure that you're fully committed to he's standing in faith. Yeah. He's like our personal trainer. You know, if you go to the gym and you start with five pound weights, you know, after a, a week or two or three or four, you're going <laughs> to go up to seven pound weights or 10 pound weights. Because the muscles are going to max out at a certain weight. And if you want them to continue to grow, you have to increase the weight. It's like that with our faith. It is like a spiritual muscle. Yes. And God is 
wanting you and urging you to let's let's ex exercise that faith and learn something new. So every battle is a new way to exercise your spiritual muscle. So unlike faith, which is a muscle that you build, as you mature spiritually, it actually gets easier to recognize the voice of God. So that's mm -hmm. an encouragement for you. So if you're just starting out and you haven't figured out how to hear or know for sure that it's the word of God, uh, that is the voice of God telling you what to do. Here's the few things that I did in the beginning that absolutely worked until you recognize that that whisper that is the Lord. So mm -hmm. you can ask the Lord to say, uh, give me peace about something. Or, you know, if you're going to close a door, make it, you know, if this is not the direction you want me to go, make it something that I feel uncertain about. And I, and gives me anxiety about if you already went into the prayer feeling like, Ooh, this is so exciting. And I want to do this. You can ask God to give you those feelings in your heart, which do change. He, he's done that every single time for me. Um, additionally, you can ask God to bring two confirmations through other to other people, making sure that they are spirit-filled, they're walking with the Lord, they hear God as well. And... God will also give you confirmation through two other people. So those are really good uh, tools that you can use in the beginning while you're starting to recognize that voice of God. And as I said, just ask God to help you start learning how to recognize when it's Him. You know, how does God become real to us? How does Jesus become real to us? By communicating. It's like any other relationship. Someone that you're close to, you communicate with. Or you don't have a relationship and you're not close. So if we feel distant and we don't feel intimately close with the Lord, it's because we don't have that two-way communication. And that's mm -hmm. something you can start learning. It's a skill that you develop. And God wants to help you, so ask Him to help you. You know, when I was diagnosed with cancer and given three to six months to live, uh, it was a scary time. But the beauty of that, knowing that God is, uh, he loved me, knowing that he was a healing God, that he is a healing God, knowing that he would lead me was the key mm -hmm. to me being able to successfully move forward and not be overwhelmed by the fear or give in to the doctor's they were throwing fear at me right and left. If you don't do this and don't do that and don't do that aggressively, you're going to die. And That's so, scary. Yeah, they use fear to compel you to go their direction. Mm -hmm. But I didn't let that control me. I let God's word control me. I said, Lord, I know that you have a plan. You always have a way of escape. So lead me. Show me what to do. So I stayed in the Word for days and really until I discerned what His will was for me. And He brought people to me. He brought information to me during this time that helped guide my steps. So uh, I didn't make plans until I had some clarity on which way I should go in that situation. But God was faithful to direct me to victory and yes. without the medical system at all. No I never chemo. went back to the doctor. No <laughs> chemo no radiation, no. no drugs. I did I didn't do all the things the doctor said I had to do if I had any hope of living. Yeah. And I lived. Wow. That was 23 years ago. Yeah, so if you haven't read the book Life, Cancer, and God yet, it's amazing. You can find it at the store at daleblack.org, but it tells their story and goes through the the total process of overcoming that fear, uh, letting God lead, and being sensitive to hearing His voice, and especially when it's in a life or death situation like that, you want to really be sure that God is leading you and He's telling you to go in the opposite direction that the, the medical system is saying. And one of the things that we talk about a lot when, when we mentioned doing this video is we talk about how the voice of God is a lot like a radio signal. And it's silent, it's invisible, you can't see it, but it's constantly there. You know it's always there. So the, the difference with people that hear from God and those that don't is that they just tune the knob correctly to the right station. And the more that you spend time in the Word, the more that you spend time in prayer with God, listening for His answers, that's you tuning that dial to where you can finally hear what He's saying. That's right. And then it becomes, like you had just mentioned, that relationship. It is like hearing from your best friend. You know your siblings, your brother, or your sister, or your best friend 
whoever it may be, you could pick up the phone, they could say one word, and you would know that it would, would be them, right? So the more time that you spend with God, it's going to be the same way. You're going to be able to recognize mm -hmm. it right off the bat. I don't need to necessarily ask for confirmation on, you know, not huge deals uh, that I'm asking God to answer prayer for. But of course, if it's big, I still do ask for that confirmation. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> He has plans and purposes for your life. You've been bought with a price. You're no longer your own. That's what the scripture says happens when we get born again. If we're truly born again, we have surrendered our life to him. So now it's him living his life through us. Yes. So when we do that and we love on him, we enjoy. When I take my walks, I just talk to him and I tell him how grateful I am for my salvation, how grateful I am for the price that he paid for so many benefits because he loves me. I thank him. I spend time thanking him, not just wanting the benefits, but thanking him for the cost of what he paid for those benefits. That's delighting in him. Well, when I do those things, when I spend that kind of time with him, he begins to put his desires in me. So I want what he wants for me. It's always good. Mm -hmm. It's never bad. It's always for life and health and blessing. But I have to make sure that those are his desires, not my desires. And then when I pray for those things, yes, he answers those prayers. That's right. So in review, let's talk about the three steps that you need to take to be able to recognize the voice of God. So step one is to invest time with the Lord and in his word. Have that relationship. Get close with him. Figure out what he's wanting you to do in your situation. Uh, look in the concordance. Try to find the scriptures that, that uh, apply to what it is that you're going through. Number two, make Make sure you take time to listen and this can be one of the hardest ones so if you do it on a regular basis and God knows okay this is your five minutes or ten minutes or thirty minutes a day that you're just listening for the Lord to answer those prayers or to prompt your heart in a, in a way um, that's the time that you need to spend just being quiet meditating on his word and waiting to hear his answer <laughs> and number three learn to recognize God's voice we We've given you several tips on how to do that because that can be fairly difficult if you haven't done it yet, but it's easy over time. All you got to do is just keep practicing. That's right. Keep practicing. You know, this lesson is available as a free download and you can acquire that by visiting daleblack.org and going to free downloads and taking advantage of the notes and scriptures of this particular lesson. We would really like to thank all of our partners and donors. Without you, these videos would never be possible. So we thank you so much. If you are interested in the benefits that you can get from becoming a partner with Dale Black Ministries, please go to the daleblack.org website, click on partnership. There's lots of different options available for you. And thank you so much. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and you can also hit the little bell to get notified every time a new video becomes available. That's all the time we have for today. But this is Paula and Kara Black telling you and reminding you, with God, nothing is impossible.